Hello, I'm Alexander Hoffman with Advanced Engineering Consultants. We're a one-stop shop construction document engineering firm. So we perform civil, structural, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, fire protection, and rezoning for multifamily, single family, and commercial developments. Larry, after you. Larry Feldman, CEO of Feldman Equities. We are owners and developers of office buildings based right here in downtown Tampa. We own and manage about 2.8 million square feet, generally speaking mostly in the greater Tampa Bay area and a little bit down in southern Florida. Thanks, Larry. Uh, Kevin Coyne, Summit Broadband CEO. Uh, we're a local-based uh, service provider, fiber optic cables. We build out fiber optic networks around the state. We are a local company, unlike a lot of the major uh, cable companies. Uh, supported and backed by local investors as well. Many of you may know the Weatherfords, Weatherford Capital, as well as uh, Grain Management, David Grain. We bring leading edge technologies to your communities. We connect all facets of your communities with leading edge technologies, uh, whether it's residential, enterprise, hospitality, uh, governmental solutions, and, and we partner well with the government as well. So thank you for having us. I'm Josh Christensen. I'm the general manager of Suffolk Construction. On the Gulf Coast of Florida, we have offices uh, here in Tampa, about uh, a few levels down in this building. We're doing uh, a couple of the Water Street jobs, the two, the two behind us, the Addition and the Asher. Uh, we're a national general contractor, uh, four offices in Florida. Uh, really proud of what we've done in Tampa. We came here about six years ago, started with a Tampa Hard Rock, uh, doing some Water Street work, doing some work with the Housing Authority. So a good, uh, across a, a good scope of market sectors and uh, really proud of our growth and uh, glad to be here today. Good morning, I'm uh, Dominic Pickering. I am the executive director for BTI Partners. We're a land developer, got uh, various tracts of land all throughout the states, um, but the one that many of you may know here is we're the master developer for the West Shore Marina District. Um, and we're building uh, Marina Point, the three luxury towers um, in the West Shore Marina District. I'm Rob Ledford. Um, Chief Operating Officer, Baker Barrios Architects. We're a commercial architectural firm, interior design, landscape services, branding, and urban planning. Uh, pretty distinguished group that I get to bring down the end of the table with. So, uh, and I really like the projects you guys are doing. So, glad to see those come to fruition. Yes, I would say this is a very distinguished group we have here today for this panel, and I'm excited to hear what they have to say. So, for my first question for them, has the population growth spurred new development and will there be more redevelopment additionally how has the development spread in the tampa bay market changed well i can take that one i first would start out with my view as a new yorker growing up the stereotype about florida was this was a place where old people come and it was also called, like downtown St. Petersburg, where we have some buildings, God's waiting room for old people. And then as time wore on, the population has gotten a lot younger. What is new, particularly now, more than ever before, is that we're not only seeing young people moving into the area, but we're actually seeing them move their companies with them. So, for example, down in southern Florida, uh, historically you'd see somebody coming down 60, 70, 80 years old just to retire. They're now bringing their entire company with them. We now have in Tampa both the king and the queen, which are both recent in my, uh, migrants. Uh, the king being the Bond King moving into the Armature Works office building that was just completed. That's Jeff Gunlack of Double Line. And we have Kathy Wood in downtown St. Pete, who is the queen of tech investing. So we have now a king and a queen, both uh, recent migrants to the greater Tampa Bay area. And they're bringing, not only are they moving in, but they're bringing their entire company with them. And that's a whole new trend that we're seeing. It's not just retirees. It's not just people moving to get jobs. It's companies moving down with the people. 
Yes, we're definitely looking forward to our economic teams in the different cities around the Tampa Bay area to bring in more kings and queens in other markets. Um, Josh, do you have anything to say about the redevelopment versus new development? Uh, yeah, I mean, we see it. We see it in a lot of our markets um, where you know the, the the core district or the central business business district gets saturated, um, like Wynwood, Miami. Um, Ten years ago, no one would have lived in Wynwood, Miami, and if you did, it was pretty cheap. Now it's one of the highest rents probably in in Miami-Dade County. So it's going to happen here. Um, it's already happening here, but it, it it'll happen in places that you don't necessarily expect it. I mean, if anybody forecasted what happened down there in that area 10 years ago, good for them. Uh, they'd be really, they're really rich right now. Um, so it, it, it'll happen, but we see this pattern happening across our markets, and, and it'll be interesting to see, like, what, which one of those unknown areas are going to, where it's going to happen here. I think to Josh's point about those areas unknown, as they're filling in and the cost right now, which no one can, con you know, control and no one can predict, I think land cost obviously is your, your number one thing. And as you see that infill run out in the downtown markets in St. Pete and Tampa, you're gonna have those same issues where someone's looking for value-based. So it's gonna be an opportunity as to who's predicting the next move first. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, Florida's been known obviously for people coming here for many, many years. Um, but what's, what's really changed in the last couple of years is that Tampa's kind of forced its way into that conversation where it, I, my what, last 20 years I've spent traveling around the world selling Florida real estate to various different people. People would always want to talk about Miami, always want to talk about Orlando. Tampa was very low on the, on the priority list, but in the last couple of years that's changed significantly. And um, I can only see that increasing. And what's really great about it is that the, the influx of people are coming in from so many places. It's not as if it's just one city or one area of the country that is feeding, or even the world that is feeding Tampa. It's now starting to come from all the cities in the United States. People from California are moving to Florida. Who would have ever thought? Um, but it's happening, and it's also now happening for people coming from overseas as well. Obviously, they can't travel too much at the moment. We've, we obviously know the reasons why that is. But the number of conversations I've had with people from overseas that now want to talk about Tampa as really the darling of the real estate in Florida. There you go, it's a great, uh, great time. Dominic, I'm with you there. Uh, we're actually seeing uh, Russians come in here, uh, South Americans, Swedish, and they're all looking to develop in the Florida area. And that's really exciting for Tampa Bay. And Kevin, as our infrastructure grows to include the urban sprawl, we have a lot of single family where the workforce is now working from home a lot of times, and the internet speeds aren't what is needed. And Kevin, what could you do there with uh, your services to increase those internet speeds? Yeah, thanks, Alex. So many of you have seen recently the infrastructure bill as an example that was recently passed by Congress, uh, significant amounts of money, $65 billion to bridge the digital divide. And I, and I wanna put a quick little plug into the state we partner with the uh, Department of Economic Opp Opportunity, specifically the Office of Broadband. And if you go to their website, they've got a speed test. And they're asking all residents, commercial, residential, et cetera, to, to take that speed test. So I ask all of you to share that with your friends, go out there, because they're capturing this data to show that Florida's truly underserved with uh, broadband speeds, broadband infrastructure. And so we're participating in that, and the more that we can show that Florida is underserved, the more money the feds will bring to the state, which then get dispersed to the local communities and the local counties. So we're participating specifically, they put a directive in place for local technology planning teams to be developed amongst all the counties, and, and Tampa, Hillsborough County is still working on their teams. They're a little bit, little bit behind, but we're pushing them, trying to get that going. We will participate on that team with, along with other counties. But with all the investment uh, in real estate and development, we've all understood that there is a huge um, lack of broadband speeds amongst our community. And we're putting a, a significant amount of capital behind that to deploy fiber to the home uh, at speeds and technologies that nobody else is deploying. We're deploying IPTV, that's the latest technology, video uh, technology. We're bringing XGS PON, that is 10 gig by 10 gig symmetrical speeds. Nobody needs 10 gigs today at their home, but 
the path and the pace that we're going, we're going to be there. You're going to need it. And we're future-proofing your home. So we're spending uh, enormous amounts of capital building out fiber to your community. So we're, we're excited to participate. You guys can help in that initiative to get more money to Tampa proper uh, by going to that website and taking those speed tests. Thank you for that insight. And additionally, Advanced Engineering has worked with several internet providers in the satellite realm in outer space, uh, one of which is Amazon. I can't speak further on, uh, but maybe you can give some insight how Amazon and other aspects of internet provided satellite is going to affect your realm and your venue there uh, for those internet connections. Um, is it maybe that the internet speeds aren't as fast as the fiber network? Yeah, Alex, they're, they're, they're not. They will not hold up to the, the needs that we have today. We learned, and I'll just give you a, a brief example. We're working with the faith-based communities as one example of a, an area that was underserved. And I'll come back to your satellite question in just a second. But when COVID hit, they had to deliver their messages over the web, and they realized, hey, we don't have the speeds to be able to do this. They couldn't serve their parishioners and their communities, so we're working with them uh, and a larger partnership across the entire uh, Hillsborough County footprint. But to your point, satellite speeds, it's really meant for rural, rural areas where you just can't justify the fiber investment. Uh, the speeds won't support our everyday needs for business and, and home use, uh, but they're there as another uh, technology to, to at least get connectivity to those out in those very rural areas. And that's why it is very important to invest in the fiber for all the future developments for where our industries are going. And while we're on topic about Amazon, as uh, many know, the office realm and retail, Larry, would you say that is an endangered species? What, what do you have to say about Amazon coming in here? Well, Amazon is certainly uh, a booming uh, field, which is the industrial realm. My expertise is office, as you know, Alex. And I think that rumors of the death of the office is greatly exaggerated to invoke Mark Twain and Sam Zell more recently. Let me just uh, uh, talk briefly about why people think office is endangered. Everybody's now talking about people working from home and the so-called hybrid workforce. Well, the, the so-called hybrid workforce, the theory behind it is instead of 100 desks for 100 people, you're going to need only 50 or 60 desks because a certain portion of the day or, or the week, there are going to be in quite a few employees working from home and some are going to be at the office. Well, the problem with hybrid is that the day that everybody is coming to the office, you want everybody in all the various departments to interrelate with each other. But if you've only got 50 desks, what are you really accomplishing? And then post-COVID, nobody wants the cubby holes that we all got used to where we're right on top of each other. So space, spacing between people has to be greater than before. And then one more point, Gensler, the giant architectural firm surveyed people all over the country and by the way 76 percent of the employees surveyed said that they hate sharing desks with other people they want their own desk with their family photo they know when they come into the office the desk is there all their stuff is there and that's how they want to live so the whole hybrid thing is something that looks good on paper but in reality, our leasing volumes in 2021 exceeded our volumes in 2020. And our leasing volumes in 2020 exceeded our 2019 volume. So while initially, right after COVID struck, I was sort of cuddled up in the fetal position in sheer terror, uh, little by little, we started signing leases, and today our occupancy of our portfolio is higher than ever before. Now, Florida, Florida, Florida is a good reason for this, but it's also for the reasons I've just mentioned. So, no, I don't think uh, office is an endangered species.